Good morning, Dan and Amy. So um, the last uh, information we have on the apparent terrorist attack at the uh, Ariana Grande concert in Manchester last night, 22 dead, 59 injured. It is being treated as a terrorist attack. Manchester police uh, released a statement last night saying they're working with British counterintelligence. Uh, They also said that the uh, the individual who was responsible uh, was killed. It was a suicide bombing. Mm -hmm. They did confirm that. We know one of the names of the victim. She's an 18-year-old. Her name's Georgina Callender, and her Facebook picture is of her and Ariana Grande. She's a super fan. She met her two years ago. Um, and she died at the hospital with her mom by her side. And it's just, it's heartbreaking because so many people this morning are looking for their loved ones. I mean, some of these kids were as young as eight years old. Uh, some, a lot of teenagers love Ariana Grande. So it's hitting the children. And I, it's heartbreaking. But here's a 15-year-old, uh, the mother of a 15-year-old who is looking for her daughter. It is the most horrible feeling ever. To know that your daughter's there, you can't find her, you don't know if she's dead or alive. And I don't know how people can do this to innocent children. And, and that's it. I mean, innocent children. There's There are pink balloons in the audience. Kids just in, enjoying, you know, leaving the concert, you have such a high when you leave that this is the last thing you expect is a bomb to go off. Well, and that's what happened. It was outside the box office. It was a crowded area. This guy knew what he was doing. And now they're trying to see if he was supported by a network. There hasn't been any uh, confirmation that this is ISIS-inspired, but there is some circumstantial evidence to consider. Uh, One is uh, the date. Uh, Sebastian Gorka uh, pointed out on Twitter, four years from the public murder of uh, uh, British soldier Lee Rigby, who was uh, slaughtered with a machete in the street. and, And... Remember, dates matter to jihadists. You think about uh, the Benghazi attack on 9-11-2012. Also, this um, site intelligence group reporting that uh, pro-Islamic state social media accounts called upon followers to, quote, unquote, hunt your prey prior to the bombing last night uh, provided uh, information on U.K. English community centers, government buildings, and tourist areas according to the site intelligence group director. Well, the concert was sold out. Uh, 21,000 people were there. Again, the, the location, this was a planned attack, obviously. But President Trump used strong words. You know, he condemned the wicked ideology, but he also took it one step further. So many young, beautiful, innocent people living and enjoying their lives murdered by evil losers in life. I won't call them monsters because they would like that term. They would think that's a great name. I will call them from now on losers because that's what they are. They're losers. And we'll have more of them. But they're losers. Just remember that. Uh, if this was indeed a terrorist attack, this would be the worst terrorist attack on British soil since the uh, 7705 coordinated transit bombings. For more on this, we're pleased to be joined again by Lieutenant Colonel Jeff Atticott. He's a former JAG Corps officer and uh, now the director of the Center for Terrorism Law. Colonel Atticott, thanks for joining us again. Appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. So uh, start just with the... Um, the circumstantial evidence that I was referencing, the uh, the date, this the, being the fourth four-year anniversary of Lee Rigby's murder, the British soldier, as well as some of the social media activity that uh, was reported that was related to, uh, you know, ISIS uh, propaganda. Uh, is that to, uh, information important? Is it telling at all? Well, it's interesting to speculate, but there are so many attacks that have occurred in Europe and this country that there's hardly no dates left on the calendar. I mean, you can find some uh, attack by radical Islamic extremists to match up almost any date now. Mm. I think it's more likely that this is a uh, you know a larger picture of uh, of a response to the increased pressure by the Trump administration uh, against ISIS and against radical Islam. I mean, he's the first president we've had. George Bush didn't even do it, where he calls it what it is. It's radical Islam. Um, and they target people. I mean, this is 
clearly a, a targeted attack. Again, I, I don't like the word terrorist because it doesn't tell you who's doing it. It just says, well, they're terrorizing people. Yeah, we got all that. Uh, who's doing it? Radical Islam is the culprit. Um, and it has to be addressed, has to be dealt with. It's the evil of our time. And uh, we are in a war. It's both a metaphor and, in a sense, it's also a real war against ISIS, al-Qaeda, associated forces. But uh, when they say, well, he had no connection, he's like, no, they, they're all connected by the red thread. It's led allegiance to this ideology slash religion of radical Islam. But what's the political purpose for killing children? Well, remember the Boston Marathon, uh, one of the brothers at his trial, the prosecution showed a video from a camera, no sound, and it showed this individual, the Sarnoff brother, take the backpack off, set it down next to where the children were at the finish line, and just look at the kids and then turn around and walk away. Um, you, they don't think like we think. They will kill anyone that doesn't pledge allegiance to their version of Islam. And they don't care if it's children, if it's uh, you know a fellow Muslim, uh, females, males, uh, if you're a liberal, conservative, they will kill you. Yeah, see, to me, that that's one of the things that uh, a lot of people still have trouble getting their minds around, right? The idea, they, they look at uh, these individuals and they impose their perspective on them. And it's a, one they just don't share. Uh, the idea that, uh, well, how can we appeal to their rationality? How can we appeal to their sense of humanity? They don't share uh, those qualities that we share thus they do what they do things that peaceful people would never do and it, it seems obvious but i think p- people have a hard time internalizing that reality yeah they, they just don't want to believe it to be so and you can wish in one hand and spit the other and see which one goes up first <laughs> it is so i've been to guantanamo bay uh, i've looked at these people in the eyes and if you ask them you know what would you want what, what you know, let's negotiate. What, what will make you go away? And their answer is, oh, we want to kill you. But that doesn't leave us with a counter response or a counter offer. Mm. That's the way it is. And until we internalize that and realize that, I think Theresa May did an excellent talk. Uh, she's the prime minister in Britain. Uh, you know, you've got people in your country that, that pledge allegiance to this ideology and they reject our Western values of uh, democracy and freedom. Well, the, the reports out yesterday, uh, just p- putting some context to this in England, because uh, this is something that I raise as a matter of course, uh, these fifth column actions going on in Western European countries and to a lesser extent in America, uh, 3,500 suspected terrorists in the UK, including 400 ISIS trained fighters that are believed to have returned from Syrian and Iraqi war zones. You know, that's a small number that can do a whole lot of damage. And that's just the ones I know about, the 400. Uh, right. Europe has open borders. Uh, they have a long history of colonialism in the Middle East. They have thousands and thousands and thousands of Muslims, most of them peaceful. And many of them, of course, will lie and say they're going back to teach English or do this or do that. The other thing, and they're going back to learn how to conduct these operations. Now, this particular operation was... Well thought out, well planned out. It's not like some of the sloppy ones we have in this country where somebody gets a gun and just shoots some people. Uh, they wanted to attack this particular concert. This was planned out well in advance, how to do it, maximum blast, where do I stand, when do I do the bomb, uh, because their goal is to instill fear and get the most bang for the buck. And so this is not, you know, this is not a, uh, a jihadist that is not well informed about how to conduct a military operation. And there's some breaking news coming in just now that they have arrested one a 23-year-old man in connection with the bombing that killed 22 people. So we'll keep you up to date on that. But since they, you know, the man, the, the man who had the suicide bomb, the IED, is dead. But there is clearly a connection that he had to have worked with some larger network. And how soon till someone comes forward and takes responsibility? Yeah, that's true. I mean, you know, that the type of operation tells me that there's at least two people, maybe more, that planned it. You have to, uh, you know, case the place first. Uh, you do a walkthrough. You have to get the explosives. You have to have a, you know, a, a point where someone gets you to the point of attack. So, yeah, there's, there's a network. But, again, the larger network is this ideology of radical Islam. But certainly the British have to, uh, you know, do what they have to do, close down the radical mosques, uh, root these people out, and get them out of your country as quickly as you can. 
And is that really the the response to the uh, assertion that, look, these are the kind of attacks that you just have to deal with in a free society because there's no real way to prevent them? Well, there are things that you could do to greatly reduce the potential for them. And it's things like you're talking about. uh, And frankly, President Trump talked about it. H.R. McMaster talked about this weekend defunding uh, terrorist organizations and imposing our will on Islamic uh, theocracies that look the other way, as well as targeting the radical mosques. And there have been uh, several dozen identified in the United States that that sort of thing that we should be pursuing, at least as part of a strategy. Yeah, I agree. I mean, they hide behind our freedom of religion. They hide behind our freedom of speech. And I understand the consternation that many Muslims feel because they feel that, you know, we're all being watched down because of the actions of a few. Uh, but again, we didn't make it that way. That's the way it is, and uh, and we have to energize the Muslim community because in the community, people know who these guys are. Somebody knows who they are and what they're doing. So I agree with you. We need to stop before they get to the concert, before they get to the Boston Marathon, before they get to the airport. That's where I want to put our money. Is there, is there anything that the Trump administration isn't doing at this point that they should be doing or should be considering, particularly in the wake of last night's bombing? I think they're right on point. I mean, as I said, this president has, has called them out who they are. Uh, he hasn't played his political correctness nonsense. He understands the distinction between Islam and radical Islam. And uh, he's a real leader, in my opinion. He's, you know, obviously we're not going to change this overnight. It's going to be a long process, and it's a long war that we're facing uh, both ISIS Central and the jihadists amongst us. Right now we have over 2,000 open cases, according to the FBI. Just a year ago, it was 1,000 cases. So it's, it's growing. It's not shrinking. He is Colonel Jeff Adicott, uh, director for the Center of Terrorism Law, former JAG officer in the United States Army. Colonel Adicott, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. And, you know, speaking about the issue of security, they uh, there's reports this morning from moms that were at the concert with their kids saying there was literally no security, <laughs> that they, they, they didn't check any bags going in. I mean, and then on the way out, how, how was he able to get so close to the box office? But I guess well, everybody the, was let out at the same, you know, different exits people were, were taking well, is out it, of the venue. It's Manchester, where Manchester United plays, so it holds 21,000 people. It yeah, was but, sold but, out. But this is an interesting point. So was he in the concert? He had gained entrance, or was he outside? Out, the blast went out. The so, blast, But the pictures that I'm seeing, all there, all these bodies, it's right near near the exit. So it's near the exit, but he's outside. Outside, and so some bodies were blown back in. So the point is, I mean, this is an important point, that it wasn't like, oh, why don't they have metal detectors? I, I don't know if that stadium does mm-hmm. or not. But uh, the point is, even if they have metal detectors, even if they did the right. pat-down, he was outside waiting for people to leave, and that's when he did it. So he had to have outside help. I mean, they had an expert on CNN this morning saying, you don't just make an IED explosive device i mean sometimes well well it takes it takes some time and it takes practice it you know it's not as if he used an ak-47 or a car to ram people he this is a well-planned attack well well, we don't we don't have any background in this individual he i mean he first of all all this stuff is online number one so Mm -hmm. yeah it may take some time to learn it if you're a complete novice and number two we don't know if he was a complete novice so the kind of you know, it, I, th- I think Colonel Atticott's point is right, is whether it was directed or it was independent but allied, it's a distinction without a difference. They're all reading from the same playbook. Listen to Dan and Amy on your smartphone. Download the AM560 mobile app today at 560theanswer.com slash mobile.